Germany, the EU's heavyweight. Not only does it boast the largest population and economy within the EU, but it also stands as one of the most influential countries in the bloc. With a whopping 96 seats out of 720 in the EU Parliament, Germany isn't just participating, it's leading the charge, holding more than 13% of the total seats. And there's more. The leader of the biggest EU political party is German. And have you ever heard of this lady? Again, she's German. Therefore, when Germany goes to the polls for the EU elections on June the 9th, it matters. So if you are German, make sure you participate. So who can Germans vote for? Here's a super quick rundown on the major players, from largest to smallest, according to the latest polls. Leading the pack is the center-right CDU-CSU coalition, with a comfortable 29% of support. They're very pro-EU, advocating for much stronger EU defense measures, including EU aircraft carriers and missile defense shields. They also support very strict migration laws, proposing stronger EU borders and the creation of migration centers in third countries. And lastly, they want to integrate economic growth with environmental protection. The right-wing populist AFD holds 16%. They are strong Eurosceptics, pushing for an EU referendum to potentially establish a European economic community without losing national sovereignty. They propose reverting to national currencies and advocate for a stricter migration policy, demanding tighter borders and remigration. Next are the Greens with 16%. They are pro-EU and seek a peaceful, free EU, focus on citizens' prosperity and climate sustainability. They aim to make Europe the first climate-neutral continent. In terms of migration, they call for more humanitarian aid in crisis areas and want a long-term, fair European asylum policy. The center-left SPD at 17% is pro-EU, fighting for European health and social unions, including labor standards and reduced working hours. They also want to do a lot more for defense and a fair migration policy, emphasizing solidarity, protection of vulnerable groups, humane border controls, and legal sea rescues. Bündnis Sarah Wagenknecht at 7% are Eurosceptics, advocating for an EU overhaul towards greater national sovereignty. They oppose EU expansion to include new members like Ukraine and are also against arming Ukraine. They also have a strict stance on migration and support processing asylum applications at EU borders or in third countries. And finally, the center-right liberal FDP holding 4%. They support the EU and advocate for reduced bureaucracy and stronger defense capabilities. They are dedicated to empowering the EU, especially in foreign and security policy, calling for a European defense union and a European army. The individuals on the screen are the leading candidates representing their respective political parties. Yet Ursula von der Leyen stands out as the most probable candidate to assume the role of commission president. I understand that this overview is super high level, and if you're looking for more detail, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. We'll explore each party's policies in depth as we approach the EU election on June the 9th. Also, voting for smaller parties in EU elections can really matter. In Germany, they need just 0.5% of votes to secure a seat, much lower than the 5% required in national elections. This allows even small parties to win seats, such as Volt, which earned a seat with just 0.7% of the votes back in 2019. Now you might be wondering, how do these poll numbers actually turn into seats at the European Parliament? Well, we've crunched the numbers for you and the CDU-CSU would get the most seats, 28, followed by the SPD with 16 seats and then the AFD and Greens with 15 seats each. Bear in mind that there's a small margin of error and that some of the seats in the other column could be redistributed into the bigger parties. But the real question is, what happens next on the European stage? Well, here's where it gets interesting. In EU politics, national parties like the CDU, AFD or SPD don't directly pull the strings. For instance, there isn't a CDU party sitting in France or an SPD in Romania. Instead, Europe works a bit differently through political families or groups. For instance, Germany's CDU-CSU joins forces with other like-minded parties from all over Europe. They teamed up with France's Republicans, Spain's PP, and over 30 other parties to form a supergroup, 
known as the European People's Party, in short, EPP. Yes, it is a little complex, but hang tight. We've got a visual that'll help clear things up. It shows which German parties contribute to which European political groups. Based on the current polls, most German seats would come from the CDU, CSU, and bolster the European EPP party. The AFD, on the other hand, aligns to the IND group, and the Greens to the Greens European Free Alliance, the SPD to the SD, and the FDP to Renew Europe, and Bündnis Sarah Wagenknecht is not affiliated to any group yet. And here's something crucial for German voters to understand. Casting a vote for your national party like the FDP isn't just about local preferences. It is also an indirect vote for the Renew Europe group. This is significant because being part of Renew Europe, where Macron's Renaissance party holds the majority, might require the FDP to compromise on some of their ideas. Remember, if you're voting in Germany or elsewhere in the EU, think beyond your national parties. So, on to the European level. Who's currently winning? This chart illustrates the current composition of the European Parliament versus recent polling data. Should these poll results materialize, the European People's Party would retain its position as the most influential group, with only a slight decrease in seats, primarily attributed to the robust performance of Germany's CDU. Manfred Weber, leader of the CSU and EPP group, really underscores the significant German influence within this faction. The Identity and Democracy group, known for its Eurosceptic and right-wing stance, is poised for a remarkable gain in seats. A substantial portion of this increase is credited to Germany's AFD, which has seen considerable growth since the 2019 election. The Greens and European Free Alliance and Renew Europe are anticipated to experience significant seat losses. This downturn reflects the declining poll numbers of the Greens and FDP in Germany. Notably, the leadership of both the Greens and Renew Europe includes German figures, further highlighting strong German influence in these groups. The Progressive Alliance of Socialists and Democrats is expected to maintain a strong presence, albeit with a slight reduction in their seat count, which can also be attributed to SPD's weak performance in Germany. Intriguingly, no major German party aligns with the ECR group. However, they are still expected to experience a lot of growth, largely due to the success of Maloney's Brothers of Italy in Italy. That brings us to our third and final section of the video, the sprint towards the position of President of the European Commission, the closest thing the EU has to a president. So who are the sprinters? Right now, the EPP group is on track to secure a plurality in the parliament. This puts Ursula von der Leyen of Germany as the clear frontrunner. Nicolas Schmidt from the SD is in contention, but faces diminishing poll numbers, making his win much less probable. Then there's also the other possibilities on the screen, but to be honest, this would require a political earthquake. This video is part of our Road to the EU Elections video series. Our goal is to make the European election fun and simple. Each episode will feature a spotlight story, like this week's focus on the German parties, followed by the current polls, and the race for commission president. Are you new to EU politics? Then check the linked video for a starter on European Parliament political groups. So subscribe today, and if you're keen on supporting our mission to educate the public about the EU, consider signing up to Patreon. Until next time.